About two years ago now, I upgraded my motor mounts in the B7. And then about a year after that, I changed out my entire wheel and tire package. And to this day, I still haven't gone to get a wheel alignment. How do you think these things are related? And why am I waiting? Well, the answer is subframe alignment. Hey everyone, welcome back. And if you're new to the channel, thanks for checking me out. Today, I'm gonna to be realigning the front subframe on my Audi A4 B7, and I'll do that using this official VAG tool, number 3393, and I'm gonna go back and fix some of my old mistakes. This alignment tool is specifically made to realign the front subframe of the Audi A4 B6 and 7 and the Passat B5. So being in Canada, and it always being a bit of a challenge for me to find parts and tools at a reasonable price and being shipped through companies that I wanna work with, it was interesting to find that ECS Tuning actually had an eBay listing for these things when they weren't in stock on their site anymore. But I reached out over chat, and I don't know if they found a bag of them in the back or something, but apparently they do have more. They restocked the website, and I did purchase it through ecstuning.com for 20-something dollars USD. That's the same price that you can find it for on either the VW or Audi Snap-on site or the Asenmacher Specialty Tools site. And other than by the 3393 code, you can also find it under names online like Testing Mandrel or the Subframe Alignment Mandrel. Now, if you don't want to buy this, and because I'm such a nice guy, I'm going to give you the measurements. In case you fancy yourself handy, or maybe you have a friend who's a machinist and can make you one. I'm going to do this in millimeters, so deal with it. You can do the conversion later. But the diameter of the peg that actually goes through the alignment holes, we can call that 19 and a half millimeters. And the thicker part at the top that basically holds it into place. Diameter, let's call it 22. And the length that actually passes through the alignment holes is 56 millimeters. So let's get back to the why. Why do I even need this tool? What did I do before that I need to go back and fix and what does that have to do with wheel alignment? It all started with the work to replace my motor mounts. Here's the passenger side tucked up here, driver one right here, and to do that you got to drop three big bolts to get this bracket here disconnected from the subframe. Now, when I was doing the job, I was smart enough to notice the alignment holes because I said something like, but what I noticed is this hole up here, which does not actually have anything going through it ever, is a perfect alignment device. But I wasn't really smart enough to do anything about it at the time other than eyeball it and try my best. And honestly, looking at it, I think it's actually pretty good, but we'll test it soon. And the problem with not aligning these perfectly is that there's an effect downstream. When those three bolts come out of the front bracket, a few things happen. One is that the front of this is completely independently loose, so this bottom hole here is able to slide around. But the one in the back actually passes all the way through the bracket and into the subframe, which means that the subframe is no longer completely attached to the chassis of the car, and therefore the second hole can be misaligned as well. The subframe's connected to the control arms, so that's exactly what can happen, especially the front one here. Uh, even though both lower control arms are connected to the subframe, specifically the front end of the subframe can move more than the rear because you're not touching the bolts back there. And if this is shifting a little bit, that affects the camber on the wheel and maybe even some of the toe as well. So being that there really just isn't a lot of adjustability in the OE style front suspension components in these cars, and for the record, I am running the 034 Motorsport Street Density Control Arm Kit in the front, you really do need to make sure that you're not royally screwing up the alignment of your vehicle when you're doing your motor mount job. Therefore, mistake number one to fix is just that I didn't pay enough attention to the alignment holes and now I need to address that. The second mistake is just a matter of due diligence and the reason why you saw a bunch of bolts at the beginning of this video. So all three bolts that are on the front brackets here that hold up the motor mounts, they are torqued to yield and I didn't replace them last time. So I'm trying to be a good example for you guys here, and this is absolutely the best time to go back and do this. Just for fun, let's see how I did with the eyeball method. So keep in mind the entire goal is to match up with the master hole, the one attached to the chassis, the one that can't move. Let's see how I did lining up the motor mount bracket and the subframe. Alrighty. Good. Oh! Oh, look at that. That's great. There's a little bit of play, but it's equal throughout each of the holes. That's Damn near perfect. 
And how about the driver's side here? Uh, no, no, that's not happening. So I can tell that the subframe is a little bit forward towards the front of the car and the motor mount bracket is not even close. On to the alignment. I'm gonna leave the testing mandrels inside of their holes. They're gonna act as my pivot and anchor point when everything else becomes loosened up. And that's what the first step is. So we need to get some movement in the subframe and motor mount bracket. And the first part I'm gonna do to enable that is take up the weight of the engine. Very gently with my block and jack here, I'm just gonna lift up the motor just to take its weight off of the motor mounts themselves and the bracket it sits in. So while I take it up, I'm going to back off the 13 millimeter nut here on the bottom of the motor mount and just bring it maybe halfway down the peg, just so when the final three bolts come out of this bracket, the whole assembly can move around as I need it to. With the motor suspended, most of you now are gonna go grab your 18 mil socket and break loose the front two bolts and then do the rear as well. And then at that point, everything will be loose and you're ready to start aligning. But because I'm replacing my hardware, I'm gonna take these out entirely, put the new ones in about 95% of the way, and then do the same thing in the back. And I'll meet you back for the alignment in a second. I just had one of those moments where you're winding up and you know expecting to break loose something that's 50 or 80 foot pounds in there. And then it comes out with almost no effort, which is really scary means that there's been some vibration under the car since the motor mount job was done. And these old bolts were not torqued in there at all. So I'm just making sure that I put in some blue thread lock on these new bolts. But I just wanted to stop and mention, I'm trying out this uh, Permatex medium strength gel based thread lock this time. And this container is actually really handy to use. And uh, I like it a lot. I like how the gel is a little bit thicker and it doesn't run and drip through the threads. You can just kind of put it on like that and off you go. It's stuck there until you're ready to install. Now I'll just apply some pressure since the fresh hardware is in but not tightened down and I'll just wait until the tool drops into place. It didn't take long at all for the tool to fall into place but it's still held in here pretty good with pressure which tells me that the motor mount bracket and the subframe are still a little far forward. So I'm gonna go get my negotiator out and I'm gonna move some of those items back towards the back of the car a little bit so that I can freely move the peg. It took a tremendous amount of fiddling just to get the testing tool to fit this loose, but I'm gonna stick with that, I'm happy, and the passenger side still fits great just like it used to, so let's go ahead and torque down the bolts on the subframe. The big guy in the back goes in at 81 foot-pounds plus a quarter turn, and then the two smaller ones in the front, those are 55 foot-pounds plus a quarter turn. With the jack now removed, the motor mounts are now sitting firmly down into the brackets, so we can torque down that 13 millimeter nut to 18 and a half foot-pounds. And just like that, the job is done. Next time you go for an alignment, they should be thanking you for doing this project. Obviously, this isn't the sexiest project of all time, but I really like doing these little things. You can do it in a quick afternoon, and it's these small incremental changes that make your car just that much better. Thanks so much for watching. I truly do appreciate it. I actually have a project coming up again really soon on the B7 here that has something to do with the subframe and why I did this project first. I'm going to be bolting something to it. If you want to know what that is, consider subscribing and join me next time. Thanks.